Hello people, this is my custom loop build. In the lower right corner you'll see a live look. My cameras make the LED appear a lot brighter than it actually is, so I'm providing this still for clarity. Much of what I have in here I bought specifically for this tower, particularly the cooling supplies by EK. The CPU, the RAM, the sleeving, and the hard drive, which I have mounted in the back, are carryovers from an older build. The CPU I'm using is an FX8370. I have this overclocked to a persistent 4.5 GHz with 1.35 volts. The upper limit of the CPU is actually 4.8 GHz with 1.45, but unfortunately there is no stability beyond that point, regardless of how much voltage I've added. On the GPU side of things, I have a Fury X overclocked to 1100 on the core clock and 525 on the memory, which makes an effective 5% bump. This card is actually capable of being pushed farther, 1150 on the core clock and 550 on the memory clock, an effective 10% bump, but this is as far as I can get it to run stable uh, without having to increase the power limit dramatically. So without direct voltage control, that's pretty much where my Fury X peaks. The motherboard I'm using is an ASRock 990FX killer. It's uh, the USB 3.1 revision. There's three particular reasons why I chose this board. One, for the increased voltage support for overclocking. Two, the add-in card. It actually has an A and C USB 3.1 connection. And three, it has a bootable M.2 slot. Um, in that slot, I have a Samsung XP941, 512 gigs. It performs roughly equivalent to two standard SSDs in a RAID 0 array, just a tad bit worse if you're comparing numbers from, say, two Intel 730s or two Samsung 850 Pros. But the form factor and the reduced use in system cables justify its use slightly. This drive is actually Windows 10 bootable, though that didn't come with its share of headaches. And I'll save that for another video. For RAM, I'm using 16 gigs or two 8 gig sticks of HyperX Savage. Uh, the rated speed for my kit is 2400, and when I install them in the board, they're defaulted to 1600, though I found it to run stable at 2133 with their second XMP profile. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, 2400 is not typically a stable speed for non 9000 series FX chips. Not to say that you won't find a way on your own system. The power supply I'm using is an EVGA Supernova 850P2. It's platinum rated, fully modular, and leaves just enough headroom for me to be able to add a second GPU if I so chose in the future. Um, I have all of this housed in a fractal design Define S case. Not much to say about the case other than it made my cooling loop relatively easy to set up. I have four 140mm fans pulling in air from the outside of the case through the front and the bottom, while three high static pressure fans exhaust air out of the 420mm radiator through the top. Um, both my CPU and my GPU share the radiator in one loop. So at idle, my 125 watt CPU settles around 20 degrees, and at full load in Prime 95, it peaks at 37. So to put that into perspective, with a stock cooler, the CPU idles at 55. Idles at 55. So 37 degrees while sharing a one radiator loop with my graphics card just continues to boggle my mind. On the GPU side of things, at idle, the Fury X sits around 23 degrees, but at full load in Furmark, it only peaks at 34. I just, I don't even know what to say about that, considering you have cards in the same TDP range that idle in the 60s with their spectacular blower-style coolers. So, that being said, even after buying a second radiator, I decided at the last minute to not compromise the overall case airflow and opted to use the one larger radiator with four case fans. The second would have definitely been overkill and the airflow as it stands provides a much more suitable internal environment for all of the components. 
If there's a particular benchmark result you'd like to see, um, I'll be providing a video sometime in the future that has some standard ones, but if there's anything in particular you think I might miss, just uh, go ahead and add that to any comments you might have. Um, thank you for sitting through this build detail. Um, again, if you have any questions in regards to what I've used in my build or how my setup is operating or anything, just leave a comment. Um, take care, guys.